How's it going, people? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a video on five cheap and fast estate cars that you can buy for under £20,000. Now, yes, of course, 20 grand isn't necessarily that cheap, but the performance these cars give you is utterly ridiculous for the money. And some of them I personally reckon might be worth more in the future, given their sort of classic status that they're gaining. Let me know your thoughts in the comments if you agree or disagree with my picks, or you think I've forgotten any other cars. Remember that I'm in the UK, so prices in other countries may differ. And don't forget that whenever you buy any secondhand car, maintenance, repairs, insurance, road tax, all that good stuff is important to remember. Let me know as well in the comments, do you prefer saloons or estates? I love estates because my first car was an estate and I haven't got a problem with saloons, I just think estates are sick. Remember to hit the like button if you enjoy it, subscribe as well if you're new. Without further ado, let's get into the video. <laughs> Let's kick this video off with the Porsche Panamera 4S, which is a bit more of a hatchback than an estate, but kind of still fits the bill with its 4.8 litre V8 engine, which puts out 394 brake horsepower, taking it from 0 to 60 in 4.8 seconds. Based on the 356 prototype, these were initially very controversial amongst Porsche enthusiasts, as some welcomed the new full-size luxury car, while others said it was stepping away from the sports cars that Porsche were renowned for. As mentioned in previous videos though, it's cars like the Panamera and KN that have opened Porsche up to more markets and helped to save the company from the brink of bankruptcy. The key thing that made the Panamera so particularly enticing for some Porsche enthusiasts was the handling. Owners and reviewers alike mentioned that it feels like a dynamic car to drive, but with the additional benefit of actually being in a level of luxury. On release, it was a game changer, some journalists going as far as naming it a four-door 911, with the benefit of not giving up comfort, practicality and refinement. You get some insane specs on these too and I've said before that my personal favourite spec is the yachting blue interior which just looks amazing but even if you don't like that kind of spec there will likely be one that suits your fancy and I think it's particularly impressive how modern the interior still looks after 10 years. Though I do think the new ones are much nicer it's always important to remember your roots and these cars are strong roots to have. £18,000 is around the minimum that you'll find these listed for so for £20,000 you'll be looking at a 2010 example with around 80,000 miles on the clock. Owners absolutely rave about these cars from what I can see online and they're also pretty kind about its reliability, with some mentioning they've managed more than 150,000 miles with no issues, as long as the car has been serviced correctly. There have been some examples that have suffered from ball wear and of course coil packs are an annoying issue. PDK auto boxes need to be maintained and checked for leaks as well. Next up is one of my personal favourites and a car that I believe is well on its way to being a modern classic, the BMW M5 Touring that hosts an incredible 5 litre V10 engine inspired by BMW's F1 involvement with Sauber. It puts out 499 brake horsepower and will manage 0 to 60 in 4.6 seconds. Not bad for an aging family estate. Now everyone who's into cars knows about the E60 M5, but the E61 M5 Touring is absolute gold dust. Of the 20,589 M5s built for this generation, just 1,025 of them were Tourings, and in the UK there are around 90 to 100 of them left on the road. Roads. They continue the BMW tradition that started with the E30 of turning their saloons and coupes into wagons, after one of the E30 engineers purchased a wrecked four-door E30 and converted it into a wagon, prompting BMW to start purpose building them. The E61 doesn't have an incredibly interesting interior, but that's not what the car is about. That exterior is menacing and it's quickly achieving classic status. It is also so rare to see out on the road that I'd argue it's probably more of an exotic car than the less practical saloon. Add in that F1 inspired high revving V10 and you've got an absolutely iconic estate. Watch the prices of these over the next 10 to 15 years, I honestly believe this car has a lot of potential. If you need any more proof that this car is a literal unicorn in the car world, by removing the limiter, this car has been clocked at 207 miles per hour on a German autobahn, quicker than many supercars. High mileage examples are available for around the £18,000 mark, but as these are very rare they are hard to come by. £20,000 to get you a 2007 example with around 100,000 miles on the clock. However, as it is basically an exotic car, it also has exotic maintenance fees. That S85 block is renowned for having many potential issues, like the Vanos system, BMW's version of variable valve timing, and rod bearing wear are known problems. Don't forget the SMG gearbox red cog of death too, which is never a good sign for your car or your bank account. In third, it's another monstrous engine block attached to an estate body, the 6.2 litre naturally aspirated 
V8 that sits in the Mercedes C63 AMG, making 450 brake horsepower, 600 Nm of torque, and a 0 to 60 time of 4.5 seconds. The key selling point of this car really is that engine. I would argue it's probably one of the nicest sounding V8s available, and the fact that it's naturally aspirated helps to make it that bit more special when compared with the AMGs that have followed. And an additional benefit of that engine is that it has proven to be better on reliability than many previous Mercedes generations. There are some known problems and some have suffered from head gasket failures, crankshaft wear, leaking intake manifolds, overheating of the gearboxes and a few others but owners do note that these are generally pretty rare across the board and many hype up their ownership experiences. I would say though that like the M5, owning one of these won't be cheap as it's quoted as doing 20 miles per gallon which is never a good sign for your wallet if you've got a heavy right foot. Now even though this was the first purpose built AMG car which wasn't adapted from a standard C-Class chassis or car, it does borrow a lot of its parts from other cars like the steering wheel from the CLS 63 and the transmission from the SL63 AMG. Irrespective, the performance on these is insane, both in a straight line and in cornering, as these were known to have the most responsive steering of any Mercedes when it was released, and matches the M5 around the Nürburgring, which is pretty mad, especially when you realize that the car has 1,500 liters of boot space with the rear seats folded. I've driven an estate around the ring, and I can confirm it took me much longer than eight minutes and 13 seconds, and it didn't have that much storage either. This is the cheapest car on this list, starting at around £13,000 at the bottom end, while 20 grand to get you a 2011 example with around 80,000 miles on it. As I mentioned, there are a few known but rare issues with these, so you'll be buying one for the love of the car more than you'll be buying one for the practicality. So go into the purchase prepared for this. If you're enjoying the video, I'd appreciate if you hit the like button. If it gets a thousand likes, I'll do this video at under £5,000. I've done £10,000 before, by the way. You can go check that video out somewhere here on screen. And do hit the subscribe button as I'm trying to hit 100k and I'd really appreciate you getting involved. This whole whole video is just full of cars with ridiculous engine blocks and this Audi RS6 has arguably the coolest available from any generation. It's the 5 litre twin turbocharged V10 which puts out 571 brake horsepower, 650 Nm of torque and it goes from 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds. In a survey done by YouGov in 2021, the Audi RS6 was ranked as the 14th most popular individual car model in the world as most people have heard of the car and the majority like it too. It's always a fan favourite on social media because since the early days of fast estates, the car has been a class leader. The second generation RS6 embodies the idea of being a class leader with that ridiculous powertrain that is not dissimilar to that in the Audi R8, all-wheel drive layout as well and generally insane performance despite weighing over 2,000 kilograms. It was designed to hark back to the stunning Audi Quattro of the past, particularly in terms of the wider wheel arches and though the overall external look is starting to look a bit dated compared to some of the other cars on this list, this is almost a benefit, as it's slightly more unassuming despite being the most powerful car I'm sharing with you today. That power is also backed up by handling performance though, as every review of it notes how well weighted it feels in corners, with precise steering that lets you properly feel the car, which isn't always the case with larger cars like this. This is in part thanks to that quattro all-wheel drive, which airs on the side of understeer, but ultimately provides exceptional traction for most uses. £15,000 the minimum that I could find these listed for and for £20,000 you'll get a 2008 example with around 80,000 miles on it. Not bad for a car that is renowned as one of the most popular in the world. Maintenance on these is expensive and there are a few issues that should be cheap but require the engine out to fix. For example there's a seal in the oil pump that costs 50p but if it starts to leak it will cost more than two grand to replace as it's right at the back of the engine. Similarly the hydraulic dampers are known to leak but many owners simply replace them with coilovers if they go wrong to reduce the repair bill. Normally I don't like to double up on one manufacturer in my videos but I also don't like to choose cars from just one country and I'm breaking both of those rules in this video. Taking the top spot is the Mercedes E63 AMG with its 5.5 litre twin turbocharged V8 which puts out 517 brake horsepower, 700 newton meters of torque and a 0 to 60 time of 4.3 seconds. Utterly ridiculous performance for an estate that weighs almost 2,000 kilograms. Now originally the E63 shared its engine with the C63 mentioned previously but from 2012 it was replaced with the twin turbo V8 giving it that ridiculous torque figure but also slightly more practicality and fuel economy at 28 miles per gallon instead of 20. It comes paired with a 7 speed AMG speed shift automatic gearbox which helps it to achieve that ridiculous 0 to 60 time which is quicker than cars like the first gen Audi R8. Can you imagine pulling up to the start of a drag race in this huge 
meter long estate next to what is basically a supercar and absolutely smoking it off the line. Pretty ridiculous stuff. With the performance pack, you'll also benefit from stiffer suspension, a limited slip diff, and a few minor tweaks to the interior to up the sportiness, as if that was ever needed. That interior is pretty nice too in the right spec, and I personally like it most in the all black vibe with a bit of carbon fiber trim to remind you of the performance. What's cool is that this is still ultimately an executive car, and the interior stays true to this, with a greater focus on luxury than some of the other cars on this list, like the RS6, which has Recaro seats and the likes. This is the kind of car you could comfortably turn up to a business meeting in, then pummel down the autobahn at 180 miles per hour. The lowest I could find these listed for is around £18,000, but they've only just dropped below the 20k mark, so they will be few and far between for this kind of money. Issues with the M157 engine are well documented, and generally specialists suggest that it's a reliable block, though not entirely bulletproof. The valve timing cover has been known to leak, and there are additional problems with the timing chain, spark plugs, injectors, and coolant hoses all of which can have potentially expensive repairs if you're unlucky enough to suffer from them. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to hit the like button, a thousand likes, and I will do this at under £5,000 instead. Massive thank you to the patrons, as always, for continuing to support, and to you guys as well for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Listen.